welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to encourage you to check out our other podcast, including The War, thewar.greatdetectives.net. This is a series that I did about six years ago, with a couple of revisits since. But if you're interested in World War II, it's uh, really worth your time. Uh, We go through uh, the whole World War II period, starting with the pre-war era, and then going through the war and into the post-war era. And we take you on that journey with not only news programs, but the type of drama, comedy, and music that people were listening to. It's quite an experience. You can check it out at thewar.greatdetectives.net. Also check out our video version of this podcast at videotheater.greatdetectives.net. And all of the uh, interesting podcast series uh, we've done over on The Amazing World of Radio, amazing.greatdetectives.net. Already we've added 58 episodes in 2020. And so many interesting uh, topics, subtopics, uh, encourage you to check that out. All right, well, now it's time for today's episode of Dick Tracy. The original air date, February 16th, 1946, and the title is The Case of the Firebug Murders. America's Best Known Candy presents America's Best Known Detective... Just a moment, just a moment, old boy. What is all this? Why, this is the new Dick Tracy Show. Dick Tracy, America's favorite detective? Right you are, presented by Tootsie Rolls, that favorite American candy. A dead man, Dick Tracy. And Tootsie Rolls, too. That sounds exciting. It is, Mr. Flintheart, it is. Well, then, let's get on with it. Tonight's story, The Case of the Firebug Murders. Our story begins in a warehouse at about one o'clock in the morning. Come on, come on. How long does it take us? Take it easy, Jimmy. I'm an artist at this kind of thing. I like it to go right. Hand me that box of specially treated magnesium shavings, will you? Okay, okay. Here, oh. Now, look what you've done. You've spilled the stuff all over. Well, well, what difference does it make? It'll burn that way, too, won't it? I like things neat and tidy. Neat and tidy. I think you're nuts. That's what I like about fire. Burns clean. Clean. Yeah, we'll we'll cut out the big act and light the stuff and let's lay them out of here. Now, suppose the cops come... Ah, the cops. Yes, they don't understand. If they did... Hotfoot, hotfoot, light that fire and let's go. This empty warehouse gives me the creeps. I don't like it, I tell you. Everything's ready now, Gimmick. Hand me a mat. Yeah, yeah, here. Thanks. Now. There. The little candle is lit. It'll take about an hour to burn down to the magnesium shavings. Giving us plenty of time to get away from here with a perfect alibi. And then the magnesium scraps will burn. Come on, Hotfoot, let's go. Burn very fast, very hot. Then this big warehouse will go up, up in flames. The firemen will come, but they'll not be able to stop it. Not when Hotfoot sets it. Peter, come on. Look at that little flame. Soon it'll be a bigger flame. And a bigger flame. And then it'll be a great big fire. I walked out onto the center of the stage and called to the stage manager. Vitamin. I said to him, me good man, I know the line. What is the name of the play we are doing? Vitamin. Uh, yes, my love? 
Tracy is asleep, dear. <laughs> asleep? <laughs> Gab, do you mean to say that I've been telling that story to myself all this time? You didn't seem to mind, darling. Uh, oh, yes, I didn't, did I? Uh, what? <laughs> Tracy, old man, wake up. Wake up. Uh, 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 what's up? You, Tracy. You've been asleep. Oh, oh I'm sorry. What time is it? Uh, half after two, old man. Oh, good heavens. I've got an early conference with the fire commissioner in the morning. I've got to run. Uh, may I have my coat and hat, vitamin? Of course, old man. I'll get it for you. <sighs> well, I had a nice time at your party, Snowflake. Oh, even if you did fall asleep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Snowflake. But that series of fires we've been having in the city lately has kept me going day and night. You see... We suspect they're more than accidents. Here's your hat and coat, old fellow. Oh, thanks, Vitamin. Well, uh, you're a wonderful cook, Snowflake. Oh. <laughs> well, thanks again for asking me over to dinner. Good night. Oh, the telephone. Pardon me. It is the Flint Heart apartment. Flint Heart speaking. Hi, Flint. Let me speak to Tracy, will you? Why, Gravel Gertie. Who'd you think it was, Greer Garson? Let me speak with Tracy. They told me he was at your flat. Why, well, yes, he is Gertie. Hold on, I'll get him. It's for you, old man. Gravel Gertie. Here. Oh, thanks, Vitamin. Hello, Gertie. Look, Tracy, I've been trying to call you ever since the big fire started. Big but fire? I... Where? Over here on River Street, 101. Where all those warehouses is. Well, how long has it been burning? About a half hour, Tracy. It looks pretty bad. I've got an idea. Everything ain't strictly on the up and up, see? You see, I'm worried that my junkyard will burn up and Well, don't not... tell me about it over the phone. I'll be right over. Yes, I know there have been a great many fires down in the warehouse district, old man. But what makes you suspect foul play? Fires like that don't just happen, Vitamin. There's some reason behind all this. Did you hear that, Tracy? We must be getting close. Look at the sky up ahead, Vitamin. He Gad hadn't noticed. The fire mix is as bright as midday. Vitamin, six people have died since those fires started. I'd like to get my hands on the one who's causing them. Oh, I see, old man. Isn't that a woman standing in the middle of the street just ahead up there? Oh, yes. It's, well, it's uh, Gravel Gertie. Stop the car, Vitamin. Gertie! Gravel Gertie! Is that you, Tracy? I've been waiting here for you. Oh, what is it, Gertie? I think I got an idea about why them fires are being started, Tracy. You have? Yeah. You see that shack? Well, that's mine. And you see that yard piled high with scraps and junk? Well, that's also mine. Just read that there sign up there, will you? Gravel Gertie, dealer in junk and factory scraps. I buy and sell anything. You're in business? Yeah, Tracy. And I'm doing okay, Mm, Tracy. Factory scraps and junk. What's the matter with it, Flint Head? Nothing. Nothing at all, me dear woman. Then shut up. And stop making with the raised eyebrow department. Well, what did you want to tell me, Gertie? I want to get over to the fire. Well, this. Some guy wants to get this here place away from me. I can't understand why. Look, Flint Brain, I told you before to shut up. Now you're going to do it or will I have to give you a hit in the head? Well, come on, Gertie. Tell us the story. Well, this here guy comes around about a month ago and he asked me if I want to sell my lease. He wants to buy up the property around here, see? Go on. I tell him I ain't interested. And then he gets sore. Yes? First, he offers more money. Then he starts making with a threat. Well, what did he say? Like what? Like he was going to have this here piece of property or else that he needed it. Also, he says he needs some other property along the river here where the warehouses is, and he's going to get hold of that, too. That he had ways to get it. I see. What's his name? Now, oh, wait now. I've got his card here. Yeah, I got it in my pocket. Now, let me see. Oh, yeah, here it is. J.P. Doom. Real estate, 209 River Street. Why, that's only a block or two from here. J.P. Doom. I know that name. I don't quite follow all this, old man. Do you suspect this Doom person of setting the fire? I don't know yet, Vitamin. There's that possibility. He's a shady character, mixed up in politics. What could he hope to gain by getting this property, old sleuth? Boy, Flint, top of you, then. Look, there's been so many fires around this here neighborhood, you can't get insurance no more. Property owners is getting scared, so they sell out at this guy Doom's price. So he gets what he wants. And what he wants is that river property. You know, Vitamin, there's a rumor afoot that the city is going to put the new superhighway through here. Well, in that case, Doom will be able to name his own price and get it. Are you going to the fire now, Tracy? No, Gertie. We're going to investigate the office of J.P. Doom. <laughs> Get away 
from that window, Hartford. Stop watching that fire. Not watching? It's beautiful. Beautiful. And it's mine. I made it. <laughs> you know, Doom, I think he enjoys watching them fires. We make more than the money you pay us to make them. Listen, you. I don't want to hear you say that. Well, why not? It's true, ain't it? Don't say it. Suppose someone were to hear you. At three o'clock in the morning in your office? Why, there ain't nobody in this here building at this hour. Just the same, don't say it. <laughs> They'll never stop it. It'll burn and burn and burn until there's nothing left. Listen, Hartford, you should never have come back here to my office. Suppose you've been seen. Nobody ever sees me make my fires, Doom. I am an artist. The fires don't start till Gimmick and I are out of the neighborhood at least one hour. Yeah, yeah. I got a hand that to you, Hotfoot. You got the alibi angle worked out fine. That's because I'm smart. Smart. Well, Doom, what next? What do we burn tomorrow night? Nothing. Nothing? But you... We're laying low for a few weeks. The police have been snooping around this district like a pack of bloodhounds. They'll never catch me. I'm too clever for him. No, 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 Carfoot. Uh, I think Doom's right. Take it easy for a while till the heat's on. Don't forget, Tracy's working on this case. <laughs> Tracy. I'd like to match wits with Dick Tracy. Yeah? Well, I wouldn't. Someone knocked. Yeah. How did anyone know we was here? The light's out. Not the light from my fire. It lights up the whole city. He's trying to unlock the door. Who's there? Open up in there. Go in the other office. You can slip out the other door after he comes in here. Close the door quietly. Right. Come on. All right, I'm coming. Yeah? J.P. Doom? Yeah. What do you mean by trying to break into my office? I'm Dick Tracy of the police. I thought I saw some men come in here. Thought I'd investigate. Oh. I see. Come in, Mr. Tracy. Come in. Oh, thanks. Come in, Biderman, and shut the door. Right, old oh, oh, sleuth. There's no one here but me, Mr. Tracy. Rather late to be at your office, Mr. Doom, isn't it? Why, well, yes, Mr. Tracy, but when I heard there was another fire down here, I came right over. Like fires, Mr. Doom? Like them? I know, Mr. Tracy, but you see, I I own considerable property down here. And you're trying to buy more? Yeah. Anything criminal in that, Mr. Tracy? Depends on the method you use, me fine fella. Vitamin. Uh, but, Tracy, Gravel Gertie said he made threat. Vitamin. Let me handle this. Uh, oh, yes, quite proceed, old man. Well, Mr. Doom, you heard what Mr. Flinthart said. I assure you, Mr. Tracy, I never threatened Gravel Gertie. I tried to purchase the lease, yes, but that's all. Well, Mr. Doom, it's your word against hers. But I'm going to get to the bottom of this whole business. Surely you don't suspect me of handing anything to do with these terrible fires. I don't know, Mr. Doom. I don't know yet. But I'm going to find out. Come on, Vitamin. Right behind you, Tracy, old Tracer. Oh, by the way, Doom. Yeah? Perhaps you've heard the rumor that the city is putting the new superhighway through that property you've been trying to buy up. Could that have anything to do with the fires? Yeah. Gravel Gertie, huh? Yeah. Huh? Who's there? Don't get excited. It's us, Hotfoot and Gimmick. I yeah. thought you'd gone. Well, Hotfoot wanted to hear what Tracy had to say, so we listened. It's just as well you didn't go, boys. Oh, yeah? Remember? I said no fires for a while? Yeah. Well, that's out. I know, I know. You want to get rid of Tracy, right? Yeah. But first, we've got to get rid of Gravel Gertie. It would be a most unfortunate accident if... Her place would burn down. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> It would be most unfortunate if a place would burn down with her in it. Um, 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the intermission. Let me take this opportunity to warn you of fire, warn you of the dangers of playing with matches. We must be very careful of fire. I remember... Remember me, Mr. Flintheart? Uh, oh, remember, this is my opportunity to spread the news that Tootsie Rolls are coming back on candy counters all over America. Big, nickel-sized Tootsie Rolls. Fresh from the famous Tootsie Roll candy kitchen. You certainly have an enthusiastic fire in your eyes, Reddy. Sure. Everybody's eyes light up when they taste those good, wholesome, delicious Tootsie Rolls. Tootsie Rolls are made with chocolate and milk and loads of other bodybuilding ingredients blended to perfection. That's why Tootsie Rolls have that delicious chocolatey flavor. Flavor that really tickles your taste. My, my, already. When I realize... Yes, yes, when you realize that three generations of Americans have bought and enjoyed Tootsie Rolls, when you realize that for more than 50 years, Tootsie Rolls have been an all-American favorite with big folks and little folks, too, when you realize... Oh, I realize, Reddy. Well, all you have to realize is that the big nickel-sized Tootsie Roll is darn good candy. You can always count on that. Folks always enjoy it. That's why the big nickel-sized Tootsie Roll is a candy treat that can't be beat. Ready? I'm worried about those fires. I think we'd better get on with the story. Yes. Let's return to Dick Tracy and the case of the firebug murders. <laughs> And I'll never see my Nellie anymore. Ah, a man's wake from sun to sun. A woman's wake is never done. Ain't it the truth? Now, who can that be? At this time of night, too. Well, don't get in up, Laura. I'm coming. Oh, hello, Gertie. Well, snowflake. Come on in, Zivy. Come in. I wasn't expecting no visitors. You see, I was just about ready to hit the hay. Ain't this shack a mess? Gertie, have you seen Vitamin this evening? Vitamin? No. Him and Tracy was here last night, but Then they... you haven't seen him. Not tonight, I ain't. Tracy was around the neighborhood this afternoon and looking around, but uh, your husband wasn't with him. Oh, dear. Well, what's the matter, Gertie? Worry? Gertie, listen. Vitamin went out after lunch to see his agent, he said. And here it is, 11 o'clock at night, and I haven't heard a word from him. Now, ain't that just like a man? Well, what made you think he was here? He told me that he and Tracy had been here to see you last night. And you think he's with Tracy tonight, huh? I don't know, Gertie. I don't know. I tried to reach Tracy, but he wasn't at his office. Say, maybe that's them now. Just a minute, Jerry. Yeah? Hello, Gertie. Remember me? Oh, remember? How could I forget my best customer? Come in, come in. Come on in, Jimmy. Yeah. Now, what can I do for you two, gents? The regular order? Fifteen pounds of magnesia scrap? <laughs> yeah, Gordy. Uh, that's right, huh, Hotfoot? No, Jimmy. Hmm? We want a double order tonight. Double? Yeah. Okay. I got at least a ton of that stuff. Bought it from that small parts factory. I was... Oh, I beg your palm. This is Mrs. Flintheart. This is two customers of mine, Hotfoot and Jimmy. How do you do? How do you do? I'll get the scraps for you. I got them back here. Did you say Flintheart? Yes. Do you know my husband? No, Mrs. Flintheart. <laughs> we don't know him, Mrs. Flintheart, but, uh... <laughs> as a matter of fact, we nearly met him last night. Didn't we, Gimmick? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was with Tracy. Oh, you haven't seen him this evening. No, lady, we ain't seen him. But we'd like to. Oh, Fine, gents, you are letting a lady look a heavy box like this without trying to help her. Oh, sorry, Gertie. Here. Let Gimmick take that. Yeah. Too late now. Well, there you are. 30 pounds of magnesia scrap. Now, that'll be, uh, let me see. Four goes into 15. Carry the one. Six dollars and 35 cents. Okay, Gertie. Give her the money, Gimme. Okay. Say, uh, by the way, uh, what do you use this here stuff for? We treat this with special chemicals. To set fires. Oh, sure, to set fires. Why didn't I know? What? Sure, Gertie. 
We set all the fires in this neighborhood. Oh, why, you dirty so-and-sos. I'm going out and call Dick Tracy on the payphone and tell him. He ain't gonna go out and leave this here shack, Gertie. Oh, he's got a gun. That's right. Okay, gimmick. Tie him up. Oh, you ain't gonna get away with this when I tell Dick Tracy. You're not gonna, gonna tell anyone anything again, Gertie. Because we're going to shut you up forever. Oh! <laughs> Police headquarters, Tracy speaking. Oh, Tracy, old man, found you at last. I've been trying to get you for the last 20 minutes. Oh, I just got back to my office, Vitamin. What is it? Snowflake's not at the apartment. What happened? She go home to Mother? No, oh, no, nothing like that. She thought I was with you and went out to find us. I've been with me theatrical agent all day. I forgot to call her and tell her. Well, she'll be home soon, Vitamin. Good night. I'm going home and get some rest. Wait a minute, Tracy. She's gone to Gravel Gertie's shack. Left me a note saying that. Gravel Gertie's? I'm worried, old man. Remember you told me last night that you were going to keep a watch on Gertie's place for fear J.P. Doom would try to get even with her for telling you... About his threats. It completely slipped my mind. I've been so busy today. Do you think there's any danger, old man? I'm afraid maybe there is, Vitamin. Well, what shall I do, Tracy? My poor dear wife is there. Vitamin, meet me in front of your hotel in five minutes. We're going to Gravel Gertie's. And I hope we won't be too late. <laughs> Answer, old sleuth. Do you think she's home? Well, there seems to be some sort of light inside. I can't see anything through the window. It's too sooty. Well, stand back, Vitamin. I'm going to crack that door open. <coughs> well, I don't see... <coughs> Good heavens! Look, Tracy! Snowflake and Gertie bound and gagged. Oh, my darling, it's a wife. Get the gags off him, Vitamin. I'll put that candle out. We didn't get here a minute too soon. Those magnesium scraps would have caught fire and then... Hear me, love. Now you can speak. No. <coughs> Vitamin, vitamin. Oh, come on, Miss. Oh, yes, take the gag out of Gertie's mouth, vitamin, darling. Oh, yes, of course, me love. There. Tracy, them rats was trying to kill us. They tied us up, then they was going to... Wait a minute, Gertie, wait a minute. Not so fast. Who tied you up and who wanted to kill you? Them two rats, hot button gimmicks. They come in here and then they start... Then they what, Gertie? Oh. Reach, Tracy. That's them, Tracy. No, don't turn around, Tracy. Just stand there and keep your hands up. That's right. Okay, gimmick. Looks like we got them all. Yeah, Doom won't have nothing to worry about now. You see, Tracy, we were waiting across the street to see whether the women would be able to escape. Then we saw you and Flintheart drive up, and uh, <laughs> we couldn't pass up that golden opportunity, could we? So it is J.P. Doom, eh? That's right, Tracy. But now you'll never be able to bother him again. Or us either. Get his gun, get me. Right, Hotfoot. Oh, sure, sure. Now, you... Hey, turn on me, Hotfoot. Hey, hey, hey. Stop that. Oh, Tracy. Tracy, he's down. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Tracy thought he'd try something, did he? Okay, Gimmick. Now tie them all up good. Yeah, yeah. You want the gags again? No. No gags. They can yell all they want to now. It will all be over very soon. <laughs> No one will hear them. Oh, it's Tracy, my dear. I can't see him. They have me tied to this chair and I'm facing the other way. He's still unconscious, Vitamin. Tracy. Tracy, please wake up, Tracy. If I ever get out of this here place alive, I'm going to make them two rats rich. They were never born. The candle is rapidly running out. Or is it the sands of time? Tracy! Tracy! That there candle's getting mighty low. Close to that there magnesia. Out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow. A poor player who struts and frets his weary hour upon the stage. And then is heard. No more. Ah, shut up. Ain't it bad enough to have to die? Do you have to make with a torture, too? I am a good woman. I was hoping... Uh. Tracy, he's waking up. Oh, my head. Tracy, Tracy... Oh, where am I? We're all here in Gertie's shack. Tied up, waiting for the end, old man. What's that? In a moment, the candle will ignite the magnesium scraps, and then... Oh, I've got to get these ropes off my hands. Tracy, it's no use. We've been trying to get our own ropes off for the last 20 minutes while you were unconscious. Yeah, can't be dead, Tracy. In my language, there's no such word as can't. It's impossible, old friend. Well, I certainly did a good job. 
We've got to get out of here before that candle burns. I've got it. Got what, old Houdini? I wonder if I can roll over to the candle. Tracy, what are you going to do? I'm going to try to burn the ropes off my hands by holding them over the candle flame. Good idea, Tracy. But careful with the candle. If it gets knocked over into them scraps, this place will go up so fast we won't know what happened. I've got to take that chance. Got it yet, old smoke eater? <laughs> there. Now. Oh, hurry, Tracy, hurry. The candle's so low. The stuff will catch fire in a minute. Uh, come on, come on, burn through. Burn through. The ropes have got to burn through. <laughs> Doesn't it burn? Why doesn't it burn? I thought you said the shack would burn down in about 20 minutes. What's taking so long? It will, it will. Don't be impatient. It should go up in about 30 seconds. Come over here to the back window of the office and see it happen. No, no. I don't want to see it. You come over here, gimmick. Come on. It'll make quite a sight. No, I, I don't want to see it either. The candle is very short. And what a blaze it will make. The shack is full of oily waste rags and magnesium scraps. It'll be the biggest blaze I've ever set. Come away from that office window. Someone might see you. What are you so nervous about, Doom? You're getting everything just the way you want tonight. Tracy and the others out of the way. And now you're in the clear. What about my conscience? Conscience? Have you got a conscience? Oh, no, 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 no. Cut it out. This ain't no time to argue. We all got to hang together now. We're in pretty deep. Hang together? Yeah. What an unpleasant way of putting it. But don't think you can get rid of us, J.P. We are going to stick around. Gosh, gosh, look at the sky. Huh? It's all lit up. The shack's caught fire. Yes. Come on. Let's watch it from the window. Yeah. Hey, look at it burn. Well, that's the end of Dick Tracy, boys. He'll never bother us again. All right. Hey, hey. Tracy. Oh, Tracy. Tracy. Keep your hands up, Doom. Murder. You too, Hotfoot. Come on in, Vitamin. Right, old fire eater. Take their guns away while I keep them covered. Yes, sir, Tracy, old man. <laughs> oh, what are you laughing at, Hotfoot? <laughs> I just remembered something, Tracy. <laughs> something very funny. You can take your hand out of your coat pocket. You haven't got a gun. We took it away from you. You can't discovered. Now, you get your hands up, Tracy. I'm boss now. Tracy, he's got your gun. Hey, that's what he grabbed his chair. Look out. Hey, you. What? Oh, man. Oh. 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 Down and one to go. Stop. Stop. I give up. I give up. Okay, Mr. Doom. Okay. Spiderman. Yes, old slugger. What a battle, old man. Hot foot and gimmick out in two punches. Phone, Spiderman. Call headquarters. Tell them to send a trap over here to pick up three. We did, Vitamin. The next time these boys come in contact with anything hot, it'll be the chair in the death house of the state prison. Police headquarters, Tracy speaking. Who? Roscoe Drops. Oh, yes, Mr. Drops. You're head of the Drops Trucking Company. One of your trucks hijacked. Pete Simon, the driver, murdered, eh? Well, what were you carrying? Nylons. 50,000 pairs. No. This looks serious. I'll be right over. What's this? 50,000 pairs of nylons hijacked? Black market? Tracy on the trail of desperate men who stop at nothing? A chase through the night that almost ends in disaster? Sound exciting? It's all yours for the listening. Next Saturday, same time, same station, when Tootsie Rolls, America's best-known candy, presents America's best-known detective, Dick Tracy, in the case of the hot nylon. Featuring vitamin Flint Heart, Pete Simon, Velma Coates, Horasco Drops, Bugs, and an extremely nasty character known as Kiki. <laughs> Dick Tracy is based on the nationally known comic strip created by Chester Gould. Dick Tracy is written for radio by Sidney Sloan, directed by Mitchell Grayson, and is presented by the Sweets Company of America, makers of Tootsie Roll.
Welcome back. Well, I have to say that that arsonist may have been a psycho, but I appreciate his honesty in making sure that uh, he paid for his uh, arson materials with exact change from the person that uh, he was about to burn down their business and murder them. You just don't typically see that type of uh, ethic. I do think it's kind of an interesting era in the program with Vitamin Flint Heart uh, apparently being the big uh, Tracy sidekick, which I guess may reflect uh, his popularity as well as that of uh, Snowflake in the comic strips versus the 30s where it was Pat, Tess, and Junior. One additional fact I uncovered about Matt Crawley, uh, I, was, I was doing some research, is that uh, he actually did some Adventures of Superman, and I thought I'd recognized his voice from there, and I remembered him as Inspector Henderson. However, he was also Batman. So, you know, having him in uh, Dick Tracy would be, you know, kind of like having Michael Keaton in an audio drama. Okay, not really, but I guess kind of. All right, well, uh, I do want to go ahead and get into some listener comments and feedback. And we have uh, this from uh, Gary, uh, who uh, writes in regarding those uh, defunct cereals that uh, were the uh, chief product sold on the Dick Tracy cereals. uh, Unintentional pun there, uh, in the 1930s. And he writes, the other day, somebody commented on how bad Quaker puffed wheat and uh, Quaker puff uh, rice tasted. As a connoisseur of breakfast cereal in my younger days, I would disagree with this. Puff wheat is essentially sugar smacks without the sweet cocaine. So I'd add a little sugar and it would be better than sugar smacks because it wasn't so overwhelmingly sweet. The reader said puff rice was like eating styrofoam peanuts. The trick to eating puffed rice was pushing down on them with your spoon to submerge them in milk. This would get them soggy and get rid of that dry fat. Add with a little sugar, they were quite tasty. I love puff rice. Well, Gary, thanks so much for the note and for those... I guess we'd call them in the 21st century food hacks. That's some good information. I do wonder, uh, because, you know, you often have generic versions of the brand name cereals like the Apple Jacks and so many different cereals I see, like they've just got the generic store brand. I wonder if any store brand versions of Puff Wheat and Puff Rice uh, survive to try that out on. If uh, anyone's out in the grocery store and sees one and feels uh, an urge to try it, let me know how uh, Gary's Hacks work for you. Now I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Kelly, Patreon supporter since September 2018, currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Well, that concludes our uh, run through Dick Tracy's old-time radio program. Um, I think we may have come close to touching on maybe 1% of all of the Dick Tracy uh, programs made. Uh, But uh, we will be back uh, next Tuesday with O'Hara. And uh, tomorrow, be sure and listen for an episode of The Man Called X. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.